Hi, I'm Tose. Today I'm going to talk about the story of IKEA. Ingvar Fyodor Kamprad was born on March 30, 1926. He was born on a farm in rural Sweden. He always thought about things in a positive way since then. This personality was formed by his grandmother. Before Kampra was born, in 1897, at the time, his grandfather was running the company. But his business did not go well. The company was on the edge of bankruptcy. His grandfather could not pay the mortgage. He was desperate and later committed suicide. After his grandfather's death, his grandmother managed to save the business. So he taught her grandson always to stay strong. People can solve all their problems with strong willpower. Therefore, every time when Kempra faced difficulties, he always told himself that don't give up, everything will be fine. Kempra has shown a strong interest in doing business since young. When his friends were spending time hanging out, he was always sitting in front of his table. Little Kempra was thinking about how to run the business. He started his first business when he was just 5 years old. Young Kempra bought mattresses in bulk and sold them individually. By the time he was 10, he was selling pens, pencils, and flower seeds to the people living in the town. He was already a famous businessman. Before Christmas, he rode his bicycles around the neighborhood to sell Christmas trees and decorations. For those who bought the Christmas trees from him, he would give them some extra free decorations as gifts. Therefore, he earned a good reputation. He always managed to find a way to offer people what they need at a price they can afford. Kempra had problems reading and writing which means that he must study harder compared with his classmates. However, he didn't let that disease hold him back. He studied well and did well in all his studies. In 1943, when he was 17, he made good grades in school. Therefore, his father gave him a cash reward. That was a huge amount of money. He used that money to create the IKEA company. The name IKEA is derived from Ingvar Kemper's initials I and K, plus the first letters of the name of the farm and village where he grew up. IKEA only sold small households at the beginning. At the time, the most popular goods were pencils and pans. In the 1940s, they were something hard to get even in Sweden. However, after World War II, Canberra noticed that the demand for houses was growing rapidly. At the same time, people needed more and more good and affordable furniture. However, furniture was something expensive at the time. So in 1948, he decided to start selling furniture in IKEA to attract customers to store presentation. He told people that they can get a free cup of coffee and bread if they came to the presentation. This action attracted more than a thousand people. He was shocked. He had a new idea. He decided to open a fast food restaurant in each store of IKEA. That's why you always see a restaurant in IKEA now. To sell the furniture, Kempra made a catalog and mailed it to potential customers. The prices were so low. People doubted it if they could buy good quality furniture from IKEA. Therefore, I came already an old workshop to display his furniture. The first IKEA furniture showroom was opened in 1953. People believed in IKEA's quality by seeing and touching the furniture. By the way, the company's colors were initially red and white. Nowadays, the IKEA's logo is painted in yellow and blue. That's the national color of Sweden. Even though IKEA's furniture had become more and more popular among people, the cost of shipping the furniture was still high at the time. Kempra was upset about that. He wanted to figure out a method to reduce the shipping cost. A few years later, one day Kempra saw a worker taking the legs off a table to fit it into a customer's car. That gave him a brilliant idea. If the furniture were sold in pieces that the customers put together at home, it would be much cheaper to store and ship. The idea led to the famous IKEA flat pack furniture that we all know today. However, Canberra would face big trouble later. Since the price of the furniture in IKEA was so low, Canberra was boycotted by its competitors. People from the Swedish Federation of Wood and Furniture Industry were unsatisfied with IKEA's dumping prices. They persuaded leading loggers to stop all cooperation with IKEA. For other businessmen who face this difficulty, they might freak out. But this was not the case for Ken Pratt. He saw this challenge as an opportunity for IKEA's further development. He began to buy the furniture components from Polish suppliers. Their products were cheaper than the Swedish suppliers. He also made IKEA's future production and design in-house, which means that IKEA design, produce, showcase, flat pack, and sold its furniture all in-house. Canberra believed that people should be able to afford modern furniture at a reasonable price. So he would never give up. This is the driving force behind IKEA. In the early 60s, Canberra traveled to the United States. In the States, he learned a lot how people saw things. Canberra first saw how the cash and carry trade system worked. People could get the products home immediately after they pay in the store. Customers did not need to wait for a long time. 
Under this system, people tend to buy more products. The store could earn more too. Back home, he decided to open a new store under the new system. In 1965, a huge IKEA store opened in Sweden. This new store had many competing advantages. First, the store was located in a suburb. Rental and costs were much lower than in the city. Therefore, the furniture price was lower than before too. Second, Kempra noticed that more and more people could afford the car. A car boom began in Sweden. He realized that people could shop in distant areas in the future. To encourage people to shop at IKEA, Kempra built a huge parking lot for his customers. Meanwhile, they started selling roof racks for cars for a good price. So people could put the big furniture they just bought on the top of the car. Thanks to this selling strategy, the company's revenue doubled in a year. Kemper also noticed that people like to assemble furniture by themselves. Many people considered this as a family activity. So IKEA provided more detailed instructions that make the assembly process simple and fun. The larger store in Sweden looked like New York's Guggenheim Museum. When traveling to America, Kempra loved the museum. However, after the store opened, the large store faced a big problem. There was a shortage of goods at the store. Once the store opened in the morning, customers all poured into the store to buy furniture in low prices. Even in such a large store, there weren't enough furniture to sell. There was a lot of furniture still in the warehouse. Therefore, Kempra decided to open a self-serve warehouse. So, by accident, IKEA established the self-serve system. Every IKEA store is a showroom. Customers could see different kinds of furniture at the store. They could imagine what a particular piece of furniture looked like in their house. Then, people could get whatever they want from the shops by themselves. The self-serve system makes shopping much more relaxing and convenient. After IKEA became a big success in Sweden, Kempra decided to develop the overseas market. In 1963, IKEA started its expansion in Norway. This was the first store outside Sweden. By the way, there was an interesting story during the expansion to the overseas market. Kempra hesitated for a long time whether to open a store in Switzerland. The country was known for its conservative customers. What's more, at the time, two local furniture chains operated quite well. But one day, when Kempra was walking around Zurich, he heard a young couple talking. Wow, what a beautiful chair. A young woman said to her husband. There was a stylish chair displayed in the store window. The husband nodded his head, which means that he agreed. The chair was indeed attractive. However, he told his wife that, Honey, this fancy chair is still too expensive for us. Maybe we should buy it next year. All of a sudden, Kempra made the right decision to open the store in this country. In 1973, IKEA appeared in Switzerland. Then in Australia, Netherlands, France, and USA. By now, about 500 IKEA stores are operating in 63 countries. Kempra died in his sleep on January 27, 2018. The cause of death was natural causes. He died at the age of 91. Until his death, Kempra continued to travel around the world to visit new IKEA stores. He never showed off his great wealth. He drove the same humble car for more than 20 years. Kempra only flew economy class. He never ever gave an interview. Kempra was a self-made billionaire. Upon his death, Kempra was the 8th richest person in the world, worth an estimated $58.7 billion.